Hi guys. I hope that everyone can hear me. I hope you guys can hear me. Okay. All right. Thank you. Um, thanks for joining me early. Um, my name is Tiwa Sliman. I am one of the team members at Design with EU. I'm also a product designer. Design with EU is a community that um, helps beginner and inter intermediate designers by inviting senior and experienced designers to share their knowledge about a particular design topic. We've been doing this for a while now, and we have a couple of recordings on our YouTube channel. So after the session, you can head over to our YouTube channel and um, subscribe, add it to your resource pool, or watch the videos there. You can also subscribe to our newsletter. We send a couple of information to our community via our newsletter. We send tech news, we send job opportunities, and a bunch. So you can um, subscribe to our newsletter also. You can follow us on Twitter at DWE underscore HQ to get info about the sessions. Um, the links to our social media platforms and our newsletter is currently in the chat. So you can um, you know, save it till after the session. So today, our speaker is Collins Donye. He's, he would be talking about soft and hard skills in tech and all else in between. So I'll just give a quick rundown of who Collins is and what he does in the tech ecosystem and the design community. Collins is a product design manager who builds custom bespoke products for companies and their customers. He builds empathy for their needs and delivers impactful experiences. He started design in his school years and as he grew older, he developed many business ideas and products to solve problems. So Collins then, there was a problem. He needed prototypes to explain his thoughts and the direction of his business goals. Fast forward to today, he has developed into an exceptional product designer and design manager whose focus is to build customer-centered products. He leads and manages functional design teams and designs relevant customer-centered products. Um, that's what we have about Collins is and what he does. He could also um, you know, introduce himself and tell us a bit about himself before he goes right into it. So um, you have the mic, Collins, you can proceed. Um, okay. Hey, guys. Good evening, everyone. You all can hear me clearly, right? Yes, we can. All right. Awesome. Um, okay. So... My name is Collins, Collins Donye, and um, I've been a design manager for um, for a while now, um, over a year. Um, before then, I've been a product designer for the past four years. Um, together, that's like five years experience. And um, I, I have lead, designed, and managed functional teams like across 30 plus companies, global companies, right? And um, basically worked for the majority of my career with remote teams. And um, currently at the moment, I lead and manage a design team of 15 designers um, in our clients, Austin, Texas based company. Um, it's a software dev agency. So um, that's, that's roughly about me. And um, yeah, that's, that's me. All right. Um, I'm guessing I can proceed now if you are, right? Yes, you can. All right, awesome. Okay, so um, I'm going to share my screen. Um, apologies, I can't share my um, my um, video. Right, I am not in a good space to do that currently. Um, well, there's there's bad light, so I'm not at my current um, place. So 
you just have to be with me as I share my screen. Um, all right. Okay, do let me know you can see my screen. Yes, we can. All right, awesome. Oof. Um, okay, so today we'll be talking about soft and hard skills and everything that has to do with soft and hard skills in tech. Basically, narrow down to design, right? But um, the main focus for this call will basically be um, mainly focusing on how we as designers can utilize soft skills, right? And uh, what is the difference between soft and hard skills and why do soft skills matter the most? Right, in our very design processes and you know in our career. So um you all have basically explained who I am, but for the ones coming in, I'm Collins Doye, I'm a product design manager and um been a design manager for like five years. And um a fun fact about me is I'm a sucker for anime and I love building products. I love um talking about products with my friends, I love money, I love staying at home and um I am a, I love reading, right? And I'm a very reserved personality. I don't like being out there. I don't, I, I, I basically rejected coming to speak. But um, Eugene dragged me. So he held me around some if I don't come speak. But yeah, that's, that's um, it about me. So now let's proceed. So what's it just about basically? What are we going to talk about? Um, there are just four things that we'll be talking about that I just want to talk to you guys about basically. Um, one is what are soft skills and hard skills? Two is the what, the why, the how. Basically, um, the what about uh, soft skills? What's like the main gist about it, right? Why should we care about it, right? And how to you know navigate that um, that direction of soft skills? Then test and trials. Test and trials is basically like we um, just talking about what are the things I did differently. Right to help me be better at soft skills, and um, what next? What next is like you know, what's the next thing to do from here? Right after hearing all of this, all of the things I have to say. So now let's keep going. So what 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 is soft skills and hard skills? Um, at any point, if you can't hear me at any point, please do not hesitate to to let me know because network can be quite shitty. All right, so um, okay, so what is hard skills? So hard skills basically, right? They are the skills you need like, to do your regular job as a designer. They're the skills you need to basically perform to do your work. To um, basically, they are technical skills. That's what it is in a nutshell, right? They are the skills that helps you contribute directly to the craft as a designer, right? They help you focus on showing, basically what people say, show your works in social media, right? How do you show your works? You have to go design, you have to use Figma and all those processes, use uploads, information and structure. Those are what, like all of that has to do with soft skills, right? Your visual design skills, how to use the software, how to create wireframes, mockups, right? So basically in a nutshell, your ability to produce a, a design or a digital product or your ability to utilize um your hands to do something right that is what soft skills I and mean, that's what hard skills are basically so now what is soft skills soft skills are skills you need right to keep your job as a designer now why did i come from that angle with the right the reason i did is soft skills are like the abilities right that relates to how you work so how you interact with people right now soft skills are often related to like your character your personality you can't go into a company and decide you you want to um, you know do design right to get hired you get through the door and you get into the company and you don't know how to relate to the fellow co-worker or you don't know how to relate to the fellow boss you're going to start having issues right so what are those things that elevate you from having issues with your fellow co-worker or your boss or someone in the company right those skills are called soft skills, right? Those personal traits, your your ability to talk to someone, to relate to someone, what you currently do with your friends, with your family, with the people you talk to, right? 
day by day basis. Those are soft skills, right? Like the ability to comprehend, the ability to understand, the ability to talk, the ability to speak, the ability to share information, all those are soft skills, right? So um, now soft skills are like, they help us navigate our environment, right? I'm just, um, they help us to like work well, they help us to perform well, and they help us to like achieve our goals. They help us to think critically, they help us to solve problems, they help us to resolve conflicts, they help us to interact with people effectively. Right? So through a combination of people skills, um, social skills, communication skills, character traits, emotional intelligence, these things coupled together, right, is what makes self scarce. So now, what is the force exactly with soft skills and hard skills? Like, I don't know for you, but I, I heard about soft skills, soft skills so much from the people I had around me, right? But I hardly heard soft skills in the social industry when it comes to like things like Twitter, uh, Facebook, um, Instagram, or uh, what do you call it? And so, and so forth, I really heard about soft skills. We focus more on hard skills, design boot camps, everybody's like, you know, hard skills and whatnot. Everybody focuses more on teaching you how to design, how to wire for you, how to use do user flows, right? Because those are the things that will get you through the door. Those are the things that will get you those jobs, right? So they teach you all of that. You come out from your boot camp or you've come out from your self-taught learning, like, you know, teaching yourself how to design. And then it's time for you to go get a job. And then you can't really understand why you can't even get through the first interview. Or you finally get a job and in three months' time, boom, you're out of the job. Or even less than a month, you're out of the job. A lot of these things happen, right? And they must have happened to at least a similar experience would have happened to each and every one of us here, right? In most cases. So all of that is what has to do with soft skills. The reason all of that happened is what has to do with soft skills, right? So how do we develop these things, right? So before I push forward and start boring all of you with all this information I'm about to share. Let me give you a short story. So, uh, as a designer, right, I got this job, like a really massive, really good job, really amazing pay. Like, the job was great. Give me a moment, please. Um, sorry, I'm back. I had, I had it from um, my mom was asking me a question. Well, that was not information to share. Sha. Um, oh, well, so back to just right. So, I got this job, I got this a really, really amazing job. It was, it was quite, it was quite a pay. Like, I was, it was like at that point in my life, I was not any really great. So, when this job came in. I could say there is no Nigerian company that could pay me that amount, right, at that time. This was like um, a year ago. No, sorry, um, about three years back. So, if I'm not mistaken, yeah, three years back. So, Omo, the money was mad. And then I was working on this team with like um, three senior designers. These guys were like legit top level guys. These guys had six years to seven years experience. And I was like, Omo, I am the, I am a junior designer there, but they kept regarding me like, oh, no, you're, you're senior level. I was like, are you sure about senior level? Like, ah, well, like my career just started like you know, not too long ago, but as of then, right? So I got to this company, it was a um, fintech company. And um, the company was legit, like there was money, they just got funded like twice. I was like, damn, man, money is losing out. They were even planning like traveling trips. Like everybody there using like you know top level MacBooks, they even got them phones. Money was just losing everybody. These guys were like they were in Europe, so they were really enjoying. It. And I was like, ah, oh, I don't catch track words. Like my that was the energy I had. So I went into the company like you know, all full hands on working, you know, having to like you know do my best. I want to impress. I want to make sure that ah, oh, I secure this job badly. 
Well, that was what I thought. And then three months into the job, uh, <laughs> I woke up one Monday morning and I realized that oh, well, I just got fired. I was like, ah, what happened? <laughs> This is a job I, I know I killed. Like you know, I had, I have done, you know, done everything possible. What, what, what could have gone wrong? And then there was also this guy, who, the top designer in the company, right, was hired at the same time as me. So as much as this guy was a senior guy, right, I felt he was senior for mouth, right. You know these things where most designers do, I'm not throwing shit at anybody. But most designers are like basically on their portfolio or CV or whatnot. They're not even up to three years or they got the right four years or five or the right yeah, I'm three years. And this guy that's like oh, one year in product design or two years in product design. I'm just ah mad. So that was the that was what I felt was up with this with that the third guy in in the company. And the reason I felt that way was we'll be having design sessions, this guy could this guy's skills are not up to mine. My visual skills are mad. My US skills are on point. Like this guy was not measuring up to me, right? Like I could feel the two other senior designers, right? Like vibing my ah, I was like, yes, Collins is delivering work. So it didn't make sense why they had to fire me and that guy was still there, right? So I tried reconnecting with um like the uh, one of the senior designers, trying talking to the guy, like what's up, what's happening? How why did I lose this gig? And only for the guy to tell me that, ah, more Collins, like you were, you had poor communication skills. You, you were not proactive. You were basically not ginger to do anything. You were only a designer that, oh, once tax drop on your um, table, you walk. If tax is not on your table, you are chilling, you are relaxing, or you are doing something else. You do not engage in calls or meeting calls. The only time you talk is when they ask you a question. You just talk and you go silent. I was like, well, that's not enough reason to fire someone, right? It didn't make sense. And this guy just went on about ranting about every other thing, pointing out different things. I was just like, damn, man. Why is this a reason for me to lose a job? I thought these guys being just like me. You know, I felt like they were just biased with the fact that, okay, I was the first joint designer there, right? But, I just let it slide. I got into another company again, and I lost that job after six months. It was supposed to be a contract job that goes into a full-time job. And it was the same thing I had. It was sad as fuck, like, honestly. But yeah, what do you guys think went wrong? Do you think I did anything bad? If my designs were on point, I was delivering tax, or do you feel like, yeah, that w- what that guy said about my soft skills or about the things I didn't do right in terms of communication or not talking or anything. Do you feel it was right? So I'm just, do you feel like that's a justifiable reason to have like, you know, kick me out of the team, right? I am going to leave that question for you guys. You can drop your answers in the chat if you wish to engage, but it'll be awesome if you guys engage. But yeah, so now that's the end of my gist. I'm going to come back to this just later on as we move, but let's keep moving. So now, how many of you have heard this question before? I don't like this design, but I don't know why. Has anybody heard this question? Like if you have, you could just let me know in the chat. Uh, for that, Jimmy, uh, she said, yeah. <laughs> yes, I have, all right, awesome, nice. Okay, so, well, the truth is, we have all heard this design, this same um, question before, right? We have all heard this from very stupid, probably me to use the word stupid, but very annoying clients and irritating clients and stupid clients, and even down to team managers, CEOs. All of this still boils down to soft skills. If you have ever experienced this, I want you to know that you were 100% at fault if you have experienced this. Now, that is to my own opinion, right? You are free to you know, say otherwise, you might have had a different experience. But in most cases, it's always 100% the designer's fault. And I am going to come back to that. And I'm going to explain why I said it's always the designer's fault in most cases. Let me see, somebody just, oh yeah, all right. So yeah, let's keep going. So, the reason I said most times it's always the designer's fault in terms of why they lose the job 
or why a client doesn't like to design. It might be that, oh, you design amazing designs, man, for real. Like your designs are bandy, you don't cook fire. But you end up coming that the, design, the client does not like your designs, right? He tells you that, oh, well, these designs make sense, but I don't think this is what I want. I don't like it. I, I don't know why, right? That statement is very, very annoying. And in most cases, like I mentioned, design as fault. So now, why is this our fault? Why do you think it is our fault? Is why is what we're going to find out now. So now let's jump in. So for for a start, let's talk about the world, right? So in talking about the world, I'm going to talk about communication, articulation, right? Honestly, it's crazy that soft skills, right? We help you like land jobs and be successful in your careers, right? Like this has been out of my own experience. And I'll tell you a fact that focus structure, right? Focus, structure, repetition, help us hone design skills, right? But then this also in a way help us hone soft skills. Soft skills are not there is no like um, one roadmap or a guide to how you develop soft skills or to how you practice soft skills, right? To date, I can tell you that there is there is really no proven way to develop these soft skills. What everybody is telling you is based on their own experience and their knowledge on what works for them, right? And that's basically what I'm going to tell you guys from like going forward, right? So that story I mentioned about why I lost a job in three months and why I lost a six months contract gig that was supposed to turn into a full time gig, why I lost those two gigs at, least at the early stages of my career, right? I'm going to explain why and why those things happen, what caused them, right? And how we can do better as designers, right? So let's let's go forward. Mm. So communication articulation, right? So what is it? So a great part of effective and efficient ways. It is, it is sad for a designer to just focus on designs alone, right? Like the industry of designers is really about like what you do as a designer in terms of your design skills, your visual skills, your UX skills. All of that is just one side of it, right? That is just 30% of the job, right? 70% of the job falls down to soft skills falls down to how you communicate effectively, right? Falls down to how you explain your processes, falls down to how you explain your ideas, right? Behind those designs you are designing, that 30% design you just made, right? That you spend nine weeks cooking and cooking, and then you get in front of a client or in front of a CEO, and boom, these guys are bashing your designs or they're tearing up your designs, and at the end of the day, it's not portfolio worthy. All of that boils down to like your soft skills, to communication, to articulation. How well do you clearly communicate what you want to say? The idea is the thoughts in your head, right? Now, as someone who is a shy designer, Omo, I spent 90% of my career, right, being in the shadows, being someone who doesn't like to put himself out there. I spent that whole period, right, failing, iterating, experiencing and developing myself right and connecting with people now the crazy thing is i i didn't have a mentor right so everything i learned was based out of experiences was made out of and based out of feeling based out of getting hit back by massive mild like missiles right of shitty feedback bad pricing being used being taken advantage of, right? I had to learn everything I know now, right? And every trick and every trick I can pull. So communication was a turning point for me the moment I started realizing that more. I can't keep taking shit as a designer, right? I can't keep designing and watching these guys tear up my designs without actually even talking about why I made those certain designs. Right? Why I decided to put a rectangle here or a button here, or why I decided to follow through with this certain visual system. Right? I needed to step up. Right? And that was something I had. To 
ability to like steadily grow into wealth in the future, right? To be able to afford a Tesla. Communication and the rest soft skills, it all starts from me as a person. It all starts from your mindset. It all starts from what are your goals and your values? And why do you want to grow as a designer or elevate your career? Those were the questions I started asking. Those were the mind shift questions I started, you know, painting into my head, like, Collins, what, what's up? You can't keep this up, right? And from that moment, I realized that I needed to be proactive. I needed to stand up and I needed to make moves. And the first thing I did was to work on my communication skills, right? You can't ask colleagues to give you thumbs up just by merely showing your work and just telling them, hey, guys, my design is done. Here is the design. Or, hey, guys, I sent you a design. Take a look at it and tell me what you think. That is not enough as a designer. You have to always be ready to go the extra mile. You have to be you have to always be ready to step up, right? And take charge of what you designed as a designer, as a designer. You don't need to be a manager, you don't need to be a leader in the team to be able to stand up and say, Oh, here's my designs, and this is it, this is what I did, these are the steps I took to, to get there, right? What do you think about this? Right? If you could improve on anything, what would you improve on? Right? That is clear communication. Then rather than saying, Oh, hi guys, here's my design, drop it in Slack, or here is my design, move on. So your work doesn't really end at that point when you just design and show them the design. Your, the real work is about to start, and that is the moment you start realizing that 70% of your job as a designer is to clearly communicate, is to clearly articulate words and speak effectively, right? Speak audibly, not to shout, not to raise your tone, but to talk at a mid-range voice, at a tone that is respectable to people. Right, and in tone that people would not misread what you're trying to say, and to be able to understand what people say, right? That is what it means to clearly communicate, right? So, in most cases, you have to be willing to over communicate, over communicate what you did, why you did it, and how you did it, right? So, the big, biggest question now is how do you communicate, right? All this talk about communication, how do you exactly communicate? So, most times we tell ourselves that, oh, we're really good communicators. And your CV and your resume, when you're writing skills, you write a com good communicator. But in most cases, we are always bad and shitty communicator. Right? I can tell you for a fact that not speaking. Hi, Collins. I don't know if you can hear me. It happens in most cases. Oh, crap. Yeah. Uh, give me a moment. Let me try and fix it. All right. Um, is it in any way better? Can you guys hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. I just refresh my net up. All right. Um, I hope it's is this breaking up. Not, not, not now. It's not breaking now. You can just proceed. All right, awesome. Okay, so um, I I don't know where you guys heard me last, but um, what I'm trying to say is. Um, 60% of us most times, when we're in calls with clients or team members, we rarely ever speak up. We are always, hey, hi, guys, and we go mute. When they ask us a question, we open up um, our video camera, right, on um, our webcam on calls. And at the end of the call, like, oh, bye, guys. So it's basically, hey, hi, answer a question, bye, guys, and you're off to go, right? If you do that as a designer, you're a very bad communicator. Honestly, a very bad communicator, and you need to change, or else your days as a designer might be really rough, and you might not enjoy it at all. Like, you might end up losing gigs and not being able to secure gigs. One thing I keep telling my friends is your ability as a designer, right, to secure jobs, right, and have good job security, okay, it is not the ability for you to keep your current, it is the ability for you to. Get your second in, in like 
it is the ability for you to get a new job. That is what job security means, right? If you can wake up today and leave your job and get a job the next day, or get a job in less than a month, that right there is what job security is, not the ability to keep that on, right? So you want to be able to be a good communicator. And how can you do this? You can do this by simply, one, listening, right? Being a good listener. It is one of the best ways to be a good like, communicator, honestly. It always starts with listening. It always starts with you. Everything about soft skills starts with you more than any other person. If you are a designer and you feel like, oh, um, I'm always getting in with bad clients, you need to start asking yourself questions. Do I communicate effectively if I keep getting bad clients? Why do I keep getting bad clients, right? Why do I keep getting bad bosses? Why do I keep being in toxic environments? Is it a sign that there are issues with your communications that you might need to fix as a designer, right? So being a design manager, one thing I have learned how to do over my years is to be good listeners. Honestly, when I say listening, it's not the one where somebody's talking and you're like, um, in your head, you're already thinking of how to reply to this person. Honestly, that's, that's wrong, like, honestly. I do that a lot when I'm talking to people I don't like. See, now I see a habit sometimes, but I try my best to stop it, all right? That is something you can't do, really. There's this designer. I don't like her. She, I used to work with her, not my current company, but previously. She's always on my, like, toes. Like, I'm trying to want to, you know, share. Anything I share with her, she doesn't like it. I'm just like, are you just out to get me, right? So the day, um, there was this particular day she came, and she was ranting again, oh, my designs are not good. My designs are not nice, or this or that. In my head, I was just thinking of the next things to say to her. The, the amount of insults I'm ready to give her. Because at that day, I was ready to quit that company. I was like, this is bullshit. I cannot keep working with such a person, right? So the moment she finished, I just started raining her down with insults. And mind you, what she was basically saying was, she was trying to like explain why she's always out to get me, right? And basically, this to summarize everything, I insulted this girl when I should have listened to her at the end of the conversation to realize that when I was done insulting her, someone who was listening to us, right, in that um, physical environment, the person was like, Connie, what is wrong with you? She was basically explaining to you that it's not that she doesn't like you, it's always that she wants to see you improve. And she's sorry she has been harsh on how she responds to you, right? And she's still learning how to give quality feedback. Doesn't mean she hates me or anything. And in my head, I was like, oh shit, I just walked up. All right. That is what being a bad listener can do to you. Right. What a bad list being a bad listener can do to you is the fact they're trying to tell you that I'm I'm designing for this, this, and that. And you will go back and go and design based on what you feel and your emotions, based on what you feel like, oh, this is a new trend, this is what these people would like, or this is what my co the competitors are doing. So we need to do something similar. In most cases, that is not that is not what you are meant to do, right? If you are listening to the clients, you realize that almost your CEO, or your boss, or the client is telling you specifically he wants design centered around this specificity, right? This thing is so it is left for you to think and navigate how you want to build a product, right? Not identical to your clients at the same time, not just focused on everything your boss is saying, but picking out the right things that your boss is saying or your client is saying, right? That he likes and seeing how you want to emulate that into your product and your problem solving, right? And design a product that basically fits into his criteria, meeting his and the client's goals or the business goals, or at the same time, meeting your user's goals, right? Why making sure that your product is not a copy and paste from any of these competitors or what the client is saying, right? That is you being an active listener, trying to understand, trying to ask questions, right? That's all being a good listener, is, basically. So, no one likes communicating with someone who only cares about putting like his or her two cents right into like what this person is saying so someone doesn't just talk to you because they are bored or they don't have anything to do in most cases in a work environment you find yourself collaborating with people because or more it is necessary to get a job done everybody wants to make money nobody wants to be broke everybody wants to get paid right so if you are not being a good active listener you are putting somebody else's job on the line right because your boss can come in and be like why is this job not done and the developer is trying to communicate to you that oh this design cannot be implemented but you're not actively listening because you're like oh the design the developer is lazy but if you understand how the tech works and you understand the certain languages and the um um setting maybe the ai the um, apis 
and why these certain things can't work, right? Or the frameworks you use, do you understand that or more? I cannot exactly make this work for this GUI I'm trying to decide for, right? That is what active listening can do to you. It can put you on the line, and that developer might be found one thing when you can't implement a design because you are designing nonsense. And at the end of the day, two people can get fired, you and the developer, right? That is what being a bad active, a bad listener can do, right? So moving on. Um, another thing would be attention. So paying attention to people's non-verbal sentiments is actually like something key, right? A lot of times you spend now with the remote works, right? I'm going to be talking based on remote right now. I'm trying to touch on physical things. But as a remote person, or more, I am 90% basically on calls all the time, right? As a remote designer. So not turning on your webcam is a problem. It's not that the company requires it, but because you want to easily communicate to this person, right? Using body signals, right? Non-verbal signals. That's oh, Omar, I'm interested in what you're saying, right? If I am, if my camera is turned off and this person's camera is turned on, right? Instantly I start feeling bad because I'm like, I don't want this person to get a bad impression of me, right? And that's something key, right? As a designer, you need to take this little things into consideration when working with people, especially when working with white guys. Because there was this guy, um, I don't want to mention his name. Um, he was working on my company before I got fired. I was working on, as, a pro, um, as a designer for his project. He was project manager. Whenever we had calls, this guy would turn on his camera, and I don't, because there's always bad lighting in my place. And I was working late night, so. I don't have, I didn't have strength to go and start fixing up my lines. Almost this guy kept reporting me to my boss whenever I don't turn on my camera. He said he found it offensive that he was, he didn't, he couldn't tell if I'm paying attention to what he's saying or if I'm actually listening to what he's saying or if I'm just saying, okay, 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 no problem, my bad, all right, bye, right? Like those were nasty traits, right, that I was showing off and I didn't realize I was doing that, right? And he was just being honest that, oh, he really likes engaging with people, right? And trying to create a connection with people he works with. So if you are always the type that, oh, I'm um, likely going to just be never turning on my camera at all as a designer, or I am never going to let these people see who I am when we are communicating over our calls. I'm not going to. That, 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 that is honestly really bad, honestly, because you want to be able to put yourself in a position where people can't see you be transparent to you where people can work with you so that when you are not interested in something and your your body language is saying that they would know that oh okay this thing doesn't really interest this guy and maybe this is not the best way to go and they can reach out to you and be like oh is everything okay and I'm like oh yeah um i just feel i'm not very comfortable with this idea or um, is there a way we can maybe talk more about this or something right maybe you are going to an interview i have had interviews with designers that they don't show their camera at all and i'm like how do you come to an interview and you don't like you know, show me your face or something how do you explain to read into you as a person right those are the things that attention right paying attention to do to you if you don't pay attention to non verbal skills you put yourself at a risk as a designer right it sounds like you know it's just a common thing to say but honestly these things are very like key to your success and growth as a designer so let's move on um, so that I don't keep you guys here for so long because we see how we're going to talk about it. So now precision. Um, when it comes to precision, right, you need to be able to communicate effectively in the sense where don't talk too much and don't talk too little. Right? Go straight to your points. Convey the message you're trying to point out. So if you are not trying to tell a story, there's only a bit in around which just go straight to the point, right? If you are not trying to engage your, your um, audience or anything, there is no need to be that one push. Go straight to the point, read what you, you, what you want to read out to them, say what you want to say to them, and move on. If you're trying to crack a joke, or if you're trying to um, present, pre do whatever you can, right, and get out of your face. You don't want to keep them there for three hours, two hours, because you will start losing interest into what, and people will start losing interest into what you say. And whenever you start realizing that whenever you try to talk, you're always getting caught up, right? People don't always take your insights or your ideas and you start saying that nobody really listens to my suggestions as a designer. Have you ever wondered if you are actually the reason why nobody listens to you because you're not clearly effectively saying what you want, you know, what they want to hear or rather you're not effectively 
communicating what you need to say or the thoughts in your head, right? So how can you solve that? It's as simple. Before you go into calls, before you go into conversations, put down notes, jot down points into what you need to say, right? I I already go into meetings without having an agenda, without having the things I need to say, because I need to guide my conversation. So I'm not beating around the bush. So I'm not saying um um all the time less than what I'm supposed to say, right? That is how you can be precise about what you say, right? Be precise about what you talk. Rather than rabble on, listen to your tune when you talk. Listen to other people's tune when they talk. Learn to respond in the right manner. Learn to respond with the right tune. When you see your heated conversations, you don't want to go with heated voices, right? You don't want to go with calm voices to try and diffuse the situations. That is how you are going to be precise when it comes to communication, right? So now, when it comes to speaking, you need to be you need to realize that or more. You need to be polite, you need to be friendly, and you need to be confident, right? Most times we find ourselves in a situation that uh, or more. as a designer, I know for a fact that I am not always the um I don't know how to easily um open up to someone, right? Because of my nature. So it takes me a while to trust you, unless maybe you are a really trusted friend of my own trusted friend then it can be easy to break that barrier because we have someone in common that we both trust very well right so but when then when you find yourself in workspaces um, it is hard as fuck to open up to people right and for people to open up to you as well right so if you are not putting yourself in a position to be courageous enough to speak you are going to always have a barrier and you're going to always have pushbacks whenever you design something or you're going to have teammates who are not willing to share vital information with you that will help you secure your job and keep your job, right? As much as soft skills rely on you, you need to be able to put yourself in a position where you allow people to also exercise their soft skills around you, right? You can't be someone who is always burning his face in meetings. You learn to smile, right? You soften your nerves and put you in a position where you can articulate your words and talk express yourself right and always remember to do that politely right when you come back from work um from weekends on a monday if on slack you can send a message to your teammates and be like hey guys hope you guys had a great weekend right that's a great way to start a message instead of just sending oh here's a design guys that walked over the weekend or here's a design you know, um and stand up meeting what did you do and you're like oh um, i did this or this is what i'm going to work on for today or tomorrow or this week and boom, you shut your mic. No, you can come to the call and be like, come in early when there is a time for a call and be like, hey guys, how you guys doing? Like, hope you guys had a great weekend. What did you guys do over the weekend? Right? That's you being polite, you being friendly, right? These are things you need to do, right? To be able to help you communicate your thoughts as a designer. So now empathizing, how can you empathize effectively as a designer? Be open-minded and be respectful, right? Using phrases as simple as, I understand where you're coming from. Especially when talking to clients, when talking to stakeholders, when talking to from helps you put yourself in their shoes and help them realize that okay, this person is trying to actually make efforts to understand what I'm saying, right? That goes a long way, honestly. It puts you in the position where by the next time you guys have a call or by the next time you guys are supposed to work on a project or something, that person is going to feel much more at ease when talking to you. It's going to feel like okay. I can be vulnerable with this person because this person is going to easily understand what I'm saying. Right? I have this designer that my co-founder does not want to work with at all in the company. Whenever I try to put this, this designer on the project to this guy, this guy's like, no, 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 I don't want him. He's not this, he's not that. And I was like, oh my God. Why? Because this guy is someone who is when it when the client, when the co-founder tells him, Oh, I don't like this, can you change this, 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 this? The, the guy is not ready to give feedback or to um, explain his thought processes. So it's you know, not ready to speak, it's not ready to do anything, it just says, okay, and he goes and changes and, and comes back. And he still doesn't do anything good, right? So the co-founder cannot tell if this guy actually understands what I'm trying to explain to him or express to him, or if this guy can actually at least say something, right? Let me know that you are alive and you are designing or you're not dead. There's no dead man that's going to design, right? And always coming back with trashy designs, right? The co-founder came this close to asking me, Collins, are you sure we should keep this guy? And I'm like, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. He helps out, is this, is this. And I had to stand up for him, right? Truly, he does help out, right? But his soft skills are shit as fuck, 
oh my god that is sad right and you don't want to be fine you don't want to find yourself in positions like that honestly trust me if you do time before you lose your gig right or the reason why they have is because i know it was the hiring process was just so hard as fuck and they were able to find a good designer and the moment they do you're out of the space all right so yeah that's that's what they have to do with communication and how to communicate effectively and how to articulate so now let's move on so now the next thing we talk about is flexibility time management and job treatment. i'm going to talk about all these things at once i'm going to talk about like at speed because i just realized that this is to nine and or more i have been talking since Jeez. So um, one other thing before we talk about this that will be good for you, right, when it comes to communication and how to practice better communication is engage in discussions. You can't say you want to communicate effectively, right, when you are not engaging in discussions. If you're having a hard time to be like assertive or to defend your ideas, stop avoiding discussions, right? You can even act as a devil's advocate sometimes when you practice your argumentation skills, right? Like you can practice it with your friends. Just feel like the person is trying to, you know, be um, unreasonable and just watch how people respond to you. That is how you can learn communication skills, right? Get through your friends, jump on the call and just start an argument about something, bring up a topic and just be annoying and watch them communicate. Watch, these are, like, make sure these are people you know that, oh, they're really good at talking, right? They're really good at communicating, they're really good at sharing the ideas they're really good at argumentative um, and you know um, skills you can pick up a thing or two about it right jump in discussions with friends jump on calls and just bant about something right and share your ideas share your thoughts you learn something you jump in the call and bant about it talk about it right slowly you realize that you're slowly growing and practicing those things will slowly help you be right a very good communicator so moving on flexibility time management and troubleshooting so um quickly and uh, about this your ability to quickly adapt to new environments right new ideas new requirements as a designer that's just basically what this is right because the why you need this and why this affected me so much is designing great and usable products requires a lot of ideas shifting and exploring different directions researching what works and what doesn't work it requires you to always constantly change things in a fast paced environment, right, as a new designer, you don't want to be found lacking, right? Because fast paced environments are always today you're working on this, tomorrow you're working on something else, the next tomorrow you're working on this. Things are moving in different directions, right? You need to be flexible, you need to be adaptive, you need to be able to have good quality troubleshooting skills and problem solving skills, right? To be able to, to survive in such environments. If not, you find yourself in, in situations where you are fired in less than three months of working in the company, right? So now, one other thing you need to know is about 20% of users, right, and 80% businesses and their needs, right, is what you focus on as a designer. That's the truth. A lot of designers refuse to accept the fact that most companies you have right now focus less on this um, user problem than um, user problems and more on business problems. You need to be flexible enough to understand that in order to design great and usable products, right, these things constantly change. So how can you be put in a position where you are not lacking? One simple way is being proactive, right? How can you do that? Be proactive, honestly. I hit when I find myself approaching a deadline and I've not done any, I've not like gotten my work ready. Almost, it is annoying, right? And this is the case for so many designers, honestly. We are always like, on oh, deadline, two days to deadline. That is when we're designing. One day to solving to doing this, that's what I designing. And I'm like, oh well, this is a shitty way to live. You can't keep living like that, honestly. You are limiting yourself as a designer and limiting your creativity, limiting your growth, and you will not even realize that these little things are like little weights pulling you down from achieving that greatness you so much want, that world class design you want to be. Right. I keep saying this, it is not enough to be a good designer with skills and be shitty with soft skills. I will pick someone who is mediocre all right average skill and very great at soft skills and i'll pick that person over a senior designer who is fucking mad at the skills or is it very shitty when it comes to um, soft skills i'll pick that, medi that mediocre designer and grow that designer into rivaling that senior designer and turn that designer into world class all right that is what soft skills are doing for you be proactive ask questions like crazy right be willing to jump be willing to like Ask 
as much questions as you can, right? Because in order for you to ask these questions, in order for you to be um, to be valuable and indispensable, you need to ask creative questions. You need to ask valuable questions, right? And high performing questions. Questions are put in a place where you're not just asking low value questions. Like, um, so there was this there was this day I was talking with fintech and for a um, a um, financing um, product. What they do basically is accounting and um, management and helping run financing and stocks and reports and whatnot. So when we were working on a product, I started asking the clients stupid questions like, okay, so what should be what should I design here? What should be on this screen? What should be on this screen? What should be on that screen? What should be on that screen? As a designer, if I'm working with you and you do that, if I'm your manager or more, your days are numbered, right? And that's your industry. So imagine working with a client and you're doing that as a designer at this moment. I'm sorry for you, right? If you can't take the initiative to put yourself in a situation where you need to go and read up on that business, you don't. It is one thing to do competitive analysis of a product, and it's another thing to actually understand the market of that product. And it's another thing to understand the industry, right? The business. The reason why this person is trying to want to solve for this problem and how well you can utilize all that information to be able to help this client articulate his thoughts and his words and help design a product that can help solve his problems now you need to understand that clients are not designers in as much as they try to be whether you have design skills from the past the moment you're a client to a designer that client is not a designer right so imagine going you now right now let's assume everybody here I do not know how to, I don't know who was a carpenter in the previous life, but you can't go to a carpenter workshop or a mechanic workshop, a car workshop, right, and decide you want to start telling the guy what to do. No, you can only tell the, the person that, oh, this is the problem I'm experiencing. And you let the person do the diagnosis, and let the person run the shift, and the person will tell you what's wrong, right? That's what it is. In most cases, I might fix it, and I keep telling this guy, and I know it's, I don't like this sound, or oh, this is not working, or oh, I don't like the chair, or I don't like the cupboard, or I don't like the bed frame, right? It's not just, it's not just, it's only shaking. I can't tell the person what is wrong with that, right? The person is confused, that, oh, I've done this product properly, and yet you keep telling me this is not wrong. Now put yourself in the shoes of the carpenter, right? You know, so put yourself in the shoes as a client who is telling that carpenter or that mechanic that, okay, I am not satisfied with the work you have done, right? But you just can't explain what exactly the problem is. That's what it is with all these clients. They don't know the design. They don't know how things work with the design. They don't know how you move things around. They don't know why you make certain decisions. So when they tell you, I do not like this design, it is there for you as a designer who is an expert to figure out why the client doesn't like that design. And how do you do that? By applying design thinking to that particular sort of problem. And how do you do that? Because it's a problem, right? You can't go through bootcamp and self-learning and be learning about design thinking. And you only use design thinking when you're doing projects. You don't use it in your daily, in your day, day to day life, right? It's a sad thing as a designer, right? I think it's an abomination if a designer doesn't do that, right? So in cases like that, when you're relating to people, apply design thinking, right? Find out why this guy thinks this way, right? You empathize, you understand, you define, you idea. Find out why he thinks that way. And I can't start going into all the details, but that is what it is, right? And how do you do that? By asking questions, putting yourself in a position where you can be more proactive than reactive, right? And what is reactive meaning? Being that you're in a position where you allow your situation to control you. Don't allow client situations or stakeholder situations so they tell you they don't like a certain design to control you or a certain work environment to control you. You don't want to just react to them and be like, okay, you don't like this design. All right, fine. I'm going to go and change it. Or for example, um, a boss tells you that, oh, okay, um, why is this button here? The next thing you're doing, you're running off to go and change the button. That is wrong. You're being reactive instead of being proactive and explaining your thoughts, trying to figure out why he's asking such questions, trying to figure out why these certain things are what it is, and why this client is actually being this annoying, or why the client, or if the client genuinely does not really understand why this is working this way, or why you made certain decisions. This is left for you, you as a designer, to stand your ground and explain, right? Not being in a position where, oh, your decision is final. No, your decision is never final. Or be in a position where your decision is flexible, but you want to help this client understand his own feedback by also enabling you to work better and design better to give him quality product. Right? That's what it means as a designer to be proactive. That's what it means to ask. Right? Don't wait for tax to jump on the table. Stand up and move. Go and find work. Right? You a lot of designers feel like oh, the moment you get a job, 
you can now go and post on Twitter. Oh, guys, I just got this gig. No shading anybody. But yeah, I just got this gig, and you feel like, oh, just getting the gig, that's fine. And you just go into the job, and you wait for them to give you tax. No. You have been searching for a job ever since, right? That made you so excited, and you went to post on social media that, oh, you just got this gig. Do you realize that the moment you get that gig, the main work starts? And how? You have to keep finding work in that company. You should never, ever be found useless in the sense where you have nothing doing for a period of time. Never, ever be found wanting. You don't want to be in a situation where someone asks you, oh, what are you working on? You always want to keep updates. You always want to share updates. You always want to let them know that, oh, hey, guys, this is what I'm working on right now. Yes, you give updates on standard. That's still, that's still not it. But updates on standard can be once a week or maybe every day. But even at that, you want to give updates on what are the current processes you're working on. What is the current state of your product? Or the designs are working on is in wireframe stage. Yes, um, I have designed so 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 number of wireframes or this core user stories. I've designed all of this and or I've designed all this tax analysis and whatnot. Sorry. <clears throat> Give updates regularly as a designer, right? It will help you stay on top of so much. It will help people be aware that oh, okay, this person is giving actual value and value to us. He's always proactive. He doesn't wait for work to finish on his end. He always has something he's able to do, right? They will value your time and value your inputs as a designer and value your communication skills as well if you have worked in your communication skills, right? That is what being proactive to, um, does to you. That's what asking questions do to you and applying design thinking do to you, right? Another thing to help you like be flexible, right? As a designer to adapt as a designer especially in the new company or new current company is being able to ask for criticism don't wait for them to want to give feedback on your designs go ahead and reach out to them first for feedback reach out to your colleagues for criticism right take all of that right even the ones you don't like or the ones you feel pissed at take all of that and go and implement that and come back and give updates that oh here is what i did I changed these changes, or I took this feedback and I felt I did some iterations. It didn't work, but here's what works. And what do you think? Or if you're still curious about your previous feedback, here is why it didn't work. Right? That is what being proactive do. Right? So this is something where if Sapa did do you badly and you're hungry, you would do all of this and be proactive, be flexible, guy, be adaptable to every fucking environment, whether so fast space or a slow space. Whatever it is, understand the organization structure, understand hierarchy of things, understand who you report to, understand who you need to communicate to effectively. Because Omar, your days can be numbered in that company if you don't do all of these things. Right? These things I've spoken on were the reasons why I lost my job in that story I, I told you guys about. Right? That was the core reason I lost my job. I was always waiting for tax. I was never giving updates. I only give updates once a week during stand up or more it's like imagine working with somebody imagine you're employing somebody right now and you don't hear from your employee for three days and you're supposed to pay salary at the end of the month or more you will go mad honestly so yeah that is what that is then um lastly crap as a designer you want to be extremely reliable member right how can you be reliable is understanding timelines right Understanding that to be a valuable asset in your team, you need to be able to be in control of your time. Nobody is going to come, come and control your time for you. If you notice it, most designers right now that have jobs, even in the project you work on, your portfolio will never get finished if you don't jump on it and you don't work on it. Your current jobs will never get finished. And your current projects or client jobs will never get finished if you don't do the work, right? And meet up with deadlines, right? As a designer, you need to stand by your work. Create consistency in your life and create control, right? Fix up your timing. Fix up how you navigate yourself in terms of having a structure in what you do. Don't just be all over the place. Have a to-do list. Have something planned out. These are the things that I'm doing. These are the things that, oh, hey, guys, these are the updates, right? And these are the next things I'm working on, right? What do you think? Do you have any other thing that you feel I should work on as a designer um, at, and currently, or I should prioritize over these current things on my list, right? And you take all of that, you go and you put timings to them. You give them a time frame that, oh, I'm hoping to have all of this ready in so, so, so time. So I'll be dropping updates as soon as I start having um, quality designs to show or quality um, responses on my um, US research. Like these are, how you be proactive this is how you time yourself right 
using th techniques like Pomodoro techniques to time yourself when you walk, right? C remove every distraction. That is how you be flexible and adaptive in an environment. Why? Because you need to be able to focus so you don't find yourself wanting and lacking as a designer, right? So that's like, I'm going to go and knock on tell you see one more. Let's say they will sack you soon. You don't want to be a loser in life, right? You always want to win. So that's something you need to do as a designer. All right. Um, so next one is stakeholder management, client management. We have always been in a situation where it feels like clients are always like the one calling the shot or gas center design. Or more, everybody feels it, right? And that's something that we are all struggling with most times. How do we navigate things like this? How do we put ourselves in a position where, okay, we can easily manage the expectations of clients? We can put ourselves in a situation where we don't clash with clients, we don't lose clients, and we don't keep working with toxic bosses, and we don't keep working with bad clients who pay us shitty money. Right. So as a designer, you need to understand that you play a key role in the position, right? No matter how much, no matter what lies, people tell you that designers do not get um, a say on the table, right? You need to realize that you play a key role because no matter how much these stakeholders will talk, they will still need someone to design their ideas. They will need someone to bring their ideas to life, right? So you and the developers play a key role, right? So you need to be able to work product productively with different types of people. You need to be able to understand personalities. You need to be able to understand rules, right? And hidden agendas in structured organizations, right? And in client and um, with clients you work with, right? So you spend a lot of time explaining processes, right? Coordinating designs with others, keeping up with updates to status on the project, or just managing expectations as a designer, right? Doing all of these complex things, right? It is normal to spend time discussing your designs with different people than you actually design it. And that's your understood. You spend more time discussing these designs, right? Senior designers spend more time in meetings that they actually design. And it's so annoying, right? For me, I have been no meeting day because I need to be able to take all the feedbacks I've gotten from clients and put them into designs and go back to give them to talk about it, right? Why do I do this? Because I want to be able to create a path, a pattern for myself with these clients and manage certain expectations that oh from the first time I start interacting with the new clients, right? I need to understand that oh, what I need to do to manage expectations is one creates a level of trust and respect. Creates this thing that says, oh, oh, I'm an expert at what I do, right? And I need you to trust me in what I do, right? So the only, the way to do that is to create respect and understanding. Right, so as designers, we, we always struggle with like communi communicating with the clients. It's a real struggle, right? And it might be because clients are using design specific languages when it's like that is honestly not natural with us. Like clients are saying some business things that you don't understand, right? I will make you get confused. Like, what is this person saying? Is this saying I should do this or do or do that? Or you just I'm like flashing out. I think I know what you want. And you go and design, right? That creates problems. Things like that creates problems, right? And in most cases, the design the client doesn't even know what his upload is or these things. They just want to be the product. They have crazy money, they don't want to be the product, right? Or in most cases, they are not the ones who handle all these things. So they are not expecting what is wireframe. In most cases, they're always seeing black and white. And like, I don't want this black and white. I had that bad experience with the previous designer. So please, I don't want black and white designs. Give me high quality visual designs, right? These are things that most times the clients don't even understand why. And it's left for you to be the one to educate. Remember when I told you about applying design thinking, right? That's something you need to do as a designer because you need to be able to create trust and respect. And how do you do that? By simply educating, asking questions, applying the design thinking to make them understand oh, certain reasons why this is this. Before you close the project, you explain your process. You talk about, oh, okay, um, this is what you want to do, right? Um, I've done my field study and I understand this is just about product. Am I right or wrong? Is there anything you can um, change? Like, oh, is there anything you can explain to me about this design, this certain business concept, right? Ask certain high value questions, right? Like, oh, why do you want to design this certain product? What are your current users facing, right? Or what is the current pain point that you want to solve for? Ask questions that put the client in a position to think and respond carefully, right? All of that information, then you go ahead to take it, dissect it, process it, and explain to the client that, okay, this is the best way I feel I'll be able to solve the problems, right? And so for, for a start, I do this, do this, do this. And here are examples of the things I do. And here's an example of the delivery we are going to get at the end of this, um, of this, um, you know, this phase. Then the next phase is wireframe. 
So at the end of this paragraph, this is what you get. This is the degree of which you get. At the end of this, this is an example of the degree of which you get. And finally, we have the higher fidelity. Finally, we have the prototype. Or this, 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 right? All of that is you explicitly laying down trust for this guy to make this guy see you as high value and see that ah, oh, this guy is a big worker. Oh, so this is why this designer gave me wireframes there. Oh, this is why. Oh, okay. So I couldn't understand why why wireframes is needed. Maybe I was too rash with that previous designer. That is you changing the narrative for the client and creating a good pathway for other new future designers that come his way. And that is a way for you to create trust with the clients that leads to retention and coming back more. Do you guys get what I mean, right? All right, so moving on. Um, when it comes to clients, right, you need to be able to manage expectations. That's what I mean by understand, right, and intuition. Being able to manage client expectations. Don't overpromise a client. Don't overpromise your stakeholders. Don't overpromise your, your managers or your um, sales managers. The ones coming to tell you that oh, we need we need this feature. We need this. this. Do not overpromise. Always under promise and over deliver as a designer. Right. That's something we always keep hearing. But that's a lot of designers really do that. Right. Be honest about your certain agreements. Right. Manage your expectations. It will enable you to always always make minimal mistakes. You will really make mistakes when you manage expectations like that. So you tell the client that, oh, this is this is this is what I'm giving you for this price, or as a stakeholder, oh, okay, so this is what I can accomplish, right? These are my currents, and these are these are the strengths I feel I'm going to um, uh, contribute to this project. Or the client calls you, like in my current company, the designer is in the project, and he's like, um, okay, so we need you to do this, to do, do this. I'm expecting the designer to let me know that, oh, okay, so this is what I feel I understand. Okay, so this is the number of pages I see we are supposed to design. All right, nice. Um, I'm going to be able to design two iterations for this, or two versions for this. All right, I can't go more than this because of the time constraint. And I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah, that's true. All right, I understand. Well, that's fine. All right. Instead of just going over, to, just picking it, like, oh, okay, I'll start work now. No problem. Here's the brief. I'll start work. Thank you. And you go to design. And the next thing you realize is that when you come back, the client is saying, um, this is the only version bad. Um, I don't like this version. And you're frustrated that the client didn't like this version. Or you are going ahead to design everything entirely, not being, not communicating enough, right? You are not involving um, um, the clients early in your processes, right? So you need to be able to manage your expectations, right? Remember that the right communication is the best way to manage your clients. We must always aim to include and communicate to clients at every stage of the project, right? Why? Because it will enable them to feel trusted. It will enable them to feel like, oh, you require their own expertise too as well. Right, it will enable them to feel involved in the process and see value for their money. Right, that applies to both stakeholders, CEOs, whoever, wherever you find yourself working. Right, even down to people you work with, your product managers, your, P your PMs, your whatnot. All of this is how you enable respect, trust, create an understanding. Right, build um, the right terms of collaboration between yourself and good relationship between yourself for future projects. Right, you always want to. Uh, crap. So when it comes to intuition, right, it's always one of the hardest things to teach as a designer. It's always one of the hardest things to teach, but it's always crucial for your success. Everybody's always busy, right? So the last thing your co-founder or your um in the company or the CEO in the company or your PM, the last thing they will need is for you to come back three times and tell them, oh, please, can you explain this product again? Can you do this? Can you explain this? Um, I don't think I understand, right? It is quite annoying, right? So it is another that I have explained so many times to keeps asking me the same like set of questions or telling me that he doesn't understand something. I expect that oh, you'll be proactive enough to want to learn about that product, to want to figure out how to like understand that product, at least to an extent. It's not coming to ask me certain questions and I'll tell you that did you even try Googling it? You're like, um, oh, I didn't think of that. Sorry, let me go and Google it. It doesn't make no sense, right? So if you're always actively listening and paying attention and trying to understand what your clients are saying or your teammates are saying or your collaborators or your, um, your PMs are saying, you'll be able to understand that intuitively you will be able to note down these things or record the conversation. So you can always go back to revisit what they said or to revisit your deliverables, right? There's this PM, um, this um, particular stakeholder I work with, whenever I finish having a call, I don't take notes with that particular guy. And I don't know why I keep forgetting to take notes whenever I, like, I can be on a different call before a, a, a call prior to that call, and I'll be taking notes. And then when I get to him, I just forget that, oh, I'm supposed to be in meeting with this guy. Because all, we're just in the talk, we just, 
And then I realized that we're in the process of just we're talking about the things we need to do, the daily reviews. And I forget I'm supposed to drop down notes. And then I'll now go back and ask the guy, I beg, what was that thing you said? Right? It's quite annoying. He might not tell me, but definitely I know it's annoying because that's not something everybody would love to experience over time. It shows you lack respect for his time, you lack respect for your time, and you are very unprofessional. And that's something you can't do to yourself as a designer. So please start being intuitive, right? Be proactive. Pay attention always, right? I've talked about attention so much, right? Pay attention to project scopes. Pay attention to your stakeholder. Understand their mood. Read body language. As a designer who is in a corporate environment, you have access to your CEO's calendar. Most of the times, you have access to your CEO's calendar or your project manager's calendar or the developer's calendar. Try looking through how many meetings they have in EDD, right? Try seeing how busy they are. So you know maybe, oh, you can send a message to the person and be like, oh, hi. And this is happening a lot of calls today, right? I should be able to meet up um, with our call today, right? It's fine if you want to push it to tomorrow. I'm always available, right? I feel you might need some rest because it's quite a hectic Monday for you so far. Like you had calls back to back. That's you being showing empathy, right? That's you paying attention. That's you showing some form of interest to the client or to the stakeholder, right? As some, for me, I am, when, no matter the company I get into, I always try to want to break that barrier of, hierarchy in terms of um, oh you're my boss I'm not supposed to relate to you I always trying to want to be friends with them first I always trying to want to get them on my side I always try to want to get involved with them right I always trying to want to make friends with people right I try to understand and see like oh oh my god when I check it when I'm talking with my um, the head of design and I'm like bro like this is you're yeah, up so like you're up so late why this is 3 a.m right shouldn't you be sleeping and he laughs that's me trying to you know, get him to smile and laugh and be like, this guy is a funny guy. He seems to be a caring person. That's you making small talks, right? It helps you build good relationship. It helps you collaborate easily. It helps you create trust. Put yourself in positions where they trust your decisions a lot to the point where they really have feedbacks, right? Just those little things matters. So now let's move on. Being valuable as a designer, I'm going to be wrapping up soon. Oh my God. I am. Um, I believe I'm talking for this long. Jeez. All right. It's a very valuable as a designer. So, one thing you need to know is knowing where the gaps exist, right, in your armor can afford you the opportunity to accommodate for the lack of scale. And what do I mean by this? As designers, what is our weaknesses? And that's the industry. But the crazy thing is, a lot of designers refuse to admit their weaknesses. I, for one, Found it hard to admit my weakness at any stage of my career. And that's quite sad because it, um, it blocked my growth at some point. At some point, I wasn't learning anything new. I felt that I had arrived. I felt like ah, I'm, I'm at my peak. But that was a fucking life, man. Honestly. I felt like ah, I'm at a cool day. Pride. It had gone from courage and self confidence to pride, right? That was crazy bad for me as a designer. So what is one to be able to self-reflect? Put yourself in a position where you can ask yourself, what are my certain weaknesses, right? What are the things I feel I am not good at? Make a list about them. They make an another list of what are the things I am good at, right? Why? Because these are your tools of attack. Like, these are your tools of war, right? I keep telling my friends, uh, in the process of jump hunting, you always want to have your tools of attack. Your tools of attack are the things you send forth to go and fight battles for you, right? The things when you go into battle, your arm, your armory, right, your shield, your sword, your axe, your bow, whatever the fuck it is, right, your protections, right, your helmets, your body armor, all of this are your tools of attack, right? Your skill sets, your technical skills, your hard skills, your UX probably when badass such um, designs you can do, the 3D designs, you have 3D designs you can do, then your soft skills, for you're a badass communicator, you're a very good um attentive listener. You have good quality leadership skills. You are very proactive, right? You have had trails and trails of good testing, testimonies in past companies. These are your tools of attacks, right? But in most cases, they are skills you lack, right? There are certain skills you lack as a designer. You want to be able to identify all of this because it will help you being able to accommodate for that lack of skill. How can you accommodate for it? Basically, you can then start preparing how to improve those skills, right? It is a different thing to say you want to learn a, a new tool or you want to learn being an illustrator as a designer or you want to learn 3D designs or you want to learn motion graphic designs. Those are not your weaknesses, right? Your weaknesses are like, what are those things you suck at? 
right? In terms of your current skills, what are those things you know for a fact that well, I am not good at this, or I'm not good at UX? What certain parts of UX are you not good at? What certain parts of the processes are you not good at? What certain parts of UI are you not good at? Right? What certain parts of the graphics are you not good at that you lack a lot, that you avoid so much whenever projects are coming, right? Those are the type of skills you want to note down as a weaknesses. It is different from the list of oh, things I want to learn skills. Those are totally different skills. When you can identify those skills, you realize that, okay, so these are my vulnerabilities, right? I should not be afraid to admit them. I should not be afraid to, in my place of environment, let people realize, oh, I'm not certain good at this, right? So when a project comes, be like, oh, okay, do you feel you can help me out here, right? I'm not exactly really good at this point in the, in the, in the process. I'm still currently learning and you know, trying to fix up my skills. But in the meantime, can you, do you, do you have any time to support? Or do we have another designer I can be paired with so that we can collaborate easily in this part? Because I'm not exactly really strong in this part, in this um, process. Clearly, explicitly saying that saves you a lot of trouble. Saves you from positions where you overestimate your, 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 your skills and your influence as a designer, right? In processes where you tell yourself, because um, I, I'm pretty sure everybody has heard this thing where you say, even if you're not 60% qualified for a job description, still apply. Makes sense, right? You apply, you get the job, and you realize that oh, I am not still effectively qualified for this role. Easily tell people when you put yourself in projects that, oh, okay, I am not really good at this, but um, I'm currently learning, and here are suggestions I feel can help me complement with these skills. Right, you identify and you admit all you're not good at, and then you're still being proactive about it instead of just being reactive and be like, Ah, I'm not good at illustration, or I'm not good at icon designs, or oh, I'm not good at user flow. Right, I'm not going to do anything about it. I hate people like that when I walk, like, I dislike energies like that because when I work with designers, you might not be good at something, sure, but that doesn't mean you can't take a shot at it. Right, let it let people see you tried, right, because that is how you keep growing, that is how you show that, Oh, you're willing to grow, you're willing to learn. And you're being proactive about what you do. And you're willing to make contributions to helping the business save money instead of going to apply someone else for just that particular skill that you should be good at. All right. So that's that. Then another thing about being vulnerable is more. You need to learn, learn new more as a designer. Right? I'm not a friendly person, I'm not someone who crash jokes. But when it comes to you more, like it's a big benefactor for your health, you know, it helps in like boost your immune system, it helps lower blood pressure, it helps you like release like stress levels from you right now think about those teammates who make you laugh at work right just for a moment picture that head those guys that make you laugh the people who turn a dull meeting into nice moments and you're like just laughing all over the place and you're enjoying ah, whenever they're in a meeting meeting is dull you miss them think about those guys right now those are the individuals like those people you might naturally gravitate towards most times true or false right like you find yourself always wanting to be around them or trying to gain in conversation with them. They're easier to like, you know, approach because why they are always like, you know, they are chill. They can be willing to crack a joke. Now, there's this thing I do in my design team. We try to always want to crack a joke at least once in our meetings. Like, they'll be like, who has a joke for us? I will just crack a joke, right? And it just cheer everybody up, make everybody feel relaxed, laugh, right? Forget about the stress of work, right? Humor do, does wonders to you, right? Especially when it comes to like, when you're giving speeches and when you're negotiating, right? You might be negotiating about salary and be like, don't try and try, but you can be negotiating about salary and be like, well, I'm the best designer there is, right? So I am what that money, what do you think, right? If not, I won't be here today. And you laugh. If they, suck, if they don't give you the job, sure, but you can just crack, like, simple say, a simple line like that can make the interviewer laugh. Because someone has used that line on me and I laugh and be like, oh, wow, I see you're quite um, confident about your skills. And you're yeah, like, yeah, yeah. But that's a joke. Please don't, don't, don't let me lose the, the job for that. And I just like I was like, oh, no, 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 I totally get you, right? And something as simple as that got the guy hired, right? So another thing is learn to be human. Honestly, like just learn to be human. Learn to laugh at yourself sometimes. If you make a mistake, laugh about it. If you're in a meeting and you 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 tap off for the meeting, you go talk bad grammar. Learn to laugh and be like, oh my god. I'm so sorry, that's not what I meant to say. Laugh, just right? Giggle a bit, be positive, smile often, turn on your webcam when you're talking with people virtually, right? Be positive, let them see your body language, and people are laughing, laugh. That every a lot of people have fake laughs on virtual calls, and it's fine. Just 
you do that because you want to create a positive environment. You want to put yourself in a situation where people feel human and close to you to a point where they can relate to you, talk about, like, talk to you about basically anything, right? Then another thing is being as a human as well, there are times when you have moods, right? And somebody cracks a joke and you're like, why are you cracking a joke? But on a normal day, it be funny. So the same way you have like, that mood is the same way everybody in the company has moods like that, right? So think of it. There are moments when you should be funny and the moments when you should not be funny. Right. You should like intuitively know things like that. It's all about timing. Know when to be funny, know when not to be funny. Don't be funny in serious meetings. Don't try to clear the hair when there's a serious meeting going on. Unless it's a meeting that's not supposed to be serious. You're not talking about anything serious and everybody feels tired. And you can clearly see everybody feels tired. Then you can crack a joke, right? It's all about great timing, right? So um then also don't try to force you more, right? Sometimes you're not a funny person, right? In most cases, it will just come to you. Don't try to force it, right? Sometimes you might need a, you might search for a joke. The joke makes sense, makes you laugh so much. You can give it a try, right? So that's that. So um, one other thing will be the love of learning and curiosity, right? I am going to rush this sharply. So love of learning and curiosity. As a designer, it's, it's, it's sad that if you're not curious, you will actually be stagnant, right? A designer that is not curious is somebody who is a candidate for stagnation, honestly, that's what it is. It always starts with a question, right? The ability to seek like new things, the ability to seek new opportunities, new challenges, right? Things to build your interest, things to expose you to different things. I love I love reading up on Greek mythology. I love watching Greek mythology. I love watching things of the Norse mythology, right? I just enjoy things like that. Just I can just go and walk, watch things like that or watch um, documentaries about history, right? And certain things that happen at some point in our, in our lives as humans, right? Read up on just so many different things to enlighten my understanding and broaden my perspective about certain things, right? Or just read up about an industry that you know nothing about, just to see what is going on, right? I'm trying to expand my understanding, my horizon, expand how I think, expand how I see different things. You never know where inspiration might spark from, right? Then you need to avoid routines if you want to expand your curiosity. Avoid routines in the sense where I have a workspace, yes. But in a month, I can tell you I only sit in my workspace for two weeks straight. The rest two weeks, I'm moving around my house with my laptop, right? Because sometimes it becomes a routine and it gets tired. It gets tiring, right? So I try to want to move around or I try to stand up on my house and go out and walk somewhere else, right? Because I just want to change the environment. I want fresh hair. I want to, you know, maybe new experiences to spark, you know, some ideas, right? You need to do things like that. Then um, be open to challenges. Be open to collaboration. Be open to asking questions. Be open to, you know, bring different things. Be open to... It's not every time you... A project come, you research, you jump to... Um, um, when doing your research surveys, the next thing you know is you are going through the normal process, but you're not open to thinking about there are so many other UX processes and processes. You could give it a try and learn about something else, right? Pick up a new UX process and process and in, like try to use that in your new in your um, current design process. There's one thing Jose Noir draws that I know. Jose Noir, when we're talking, you mentioned that oh I'm trying to learn some new design processes to how I design visually and how I approach designs. And that's beautiful, right? Like it was learning all of that and it required him to like going about learning about something in game design, something relating to real, uh, ruins or so, I can't remember the name, but it was reading up on that. Or it was reading up all night on that just to be able to design an interface for that, right? That's him learning about games, learning about Norse mythology, learning about different things, right? It was that spark of curiosity that led him to the art world, learning about uh, VR, and he's one of the leading front designers in VR designs, right? And that was the reason he got hired. Right? And it's crazy, right? Like things like that can open doors and opportunity for you, right? You don't want to know, not to like um, beat around the bush, but you don't want to know how much Ozen Rob is earning correctly just because he decided to spark his curiosity and be curious and ask questions, open to yes, saying yes to new things, right? Be curious, my guys. It will be very good for you in your workplace, right? Because it will help you figure out new things to certain problems. To help you figure out new ways to solve certain problems. Imagine you learn a new way to design visually, right? And you're going to have a project and you're like, oh, nice, let me give this a try. Are you like, ah, man, Collins, how did you do this? Or oh, hey, John, how did you do this, right? Nice, this is a new style that you haven't designed this before, right? That's packing something new, making people feel like, oh, well, this guy is a real bad asset, right? 
Exactly. That's why I do things. Be open to challenges and be ready to say yes to anything. Read books, read UX books, read life books, read business books, listen to podcasts, participate in like you know, in meetups, go out, say hi to things. Now, um, one of the last things I want to talk about for this is navigating politics as a UXR. No, what do I mean by that? Good. Before I go into this thing, I'm more tired. Somebody should respond to me. Are you guys still here? Because I'm more. Let me take a break. I mean, give me like one minute to take a break. Oh. All right, no problem. I'm over the top here. But what's been the experience of partners? Are you. I hope everybody's learning something. I would like to hear someone's voice. Aside from Tiwa, I've been hearing Tiwa's voice all, all day. Someone else, say something. Who is following, guys? Oh, yeah, that's nice. Following. Thank you, Solaro. Yeah, we're following. All right, awesome, guys. That's good. Um, yeah, so the honest truth is, soft skills is not a topic we honestly really like to talk about because it's quite boring. There's nothing really interesting about soft skills, right? And that's the honest truth. So that's the reason why so many people rarely ever talk about it, right? It is one of the um, most neglected topics in design. Everybody focuses more on you have 60, 60 to 80% of the articles you find online are always about hard skills. Nothing relies to soft skills. You rarely ever find out, right? And honestly, nobody's, everybody's, I don't know if it's gatekeeping, I don't know what it is, I don't know what's going on in the industry, but. It's a boring topic, and I'm sorry if I'm boring you guys, but to those who stuck around to this moment, right, lucky for you if you pick one or two things, and I'll be glad if you did pick one or two things, and I hope these things I'm saying give you or help you in your future as a designer. So now let's run. Um, navigating politics as a designer. <sighs> Omo, I love talking about this because I enjoy playing politics. Now, when I say I'm joining playing politics, I don't mean like this Nigerian politics, right? Or what boy reasons yours. I mean like um, being able to understand the hierarchy and structure of things in an organization, right? In the sense where certain times you might have four co-founders and everybody has their own agendas, right? Everybody wants the product to get somewhere and everybody has a co-coherent and coherent vision, right? Where they want the business to go. But in most cases, how they want the business to go there, right? It's not exactly how. They might, they might not exactly agree on certain things. In most cases, your product manager wants to climb up the ranks, right? So he's going to want to be proactive. He's going to want to be the person doing everything and not giving people chances. You need to understand those kinds of things. You need to be able to read all these things. You need to be able to honestly understand people's behavior, emotions, ego battles, understand drama that comes up in the company. Understand, I like just, oh my God, I enjoy just so much. Because why? It enables me to understand people's reactions to certain things. It enables me to understand what is going on in people's lives. What are people talking about? Who is the one talking? Right? Who is in the talk activity? Who is the person that always has all the information that I think that's it, right? Who are the people that are working, that are doing things behind the scenes that nobody realizes? That's the reason I enjoy just my company, right? So being a designer alone isn't enough to try within corporate design structure. And that's one thing for sure. The way I rose up the ranks into being a design manager, I'm just hoping my uh, nobody's here that works in my company so the way i rose up the ranks as a design manager it was very tricky something honestly i'm not going to expose myself but in the tricky in the sense where i had to play a psychological game i had to put myself in a position where i felt where the company had to understand that i am leaving soon i'm in a position where i am like i have created when I first came to the company, I made these guys realize that, see, I am hot cake, I am good at what, at what I do, right? And I am going to help you guys make money. And boom, first week, this client is like speaking crazy, like, oh my God, Collins is amazing. But you guys get this guy, like, the, the business, everything is going well. I'm dropping updates left, right, center, keeping everybody a loop. Like, my, um, the guy who hired me, the company, sent me messages back to back, like, for the first one, one telling me that, man, you are doing great. Everybody's talking about it. And I'm like, Thank you. Thank you. That's awesome. Awesome. Less than six months in, we're already having conversations on, oh, we need to move Connie's up as a product manager and design manager. I'm like, oh, thank you. That's, that's amazing. I, don't flat on me, my guys. I'm like, ah. I'm like oh, wow. I, oh, my God. It's an honor. Bullshit. I know what the fuck I did. Right? I understood my game plan. I had a game plan and I came in. 
I knew for the fact that for, in order to transition into a product design manager, it's going to be hard for me to get a job. So I needed to put myself in a company where I'll be able to transition easily and then play a psychological game with these guys, put myself in a place where I'm very valuable, that they can't drop me, I'm very unpassable as a designer. And the only next thing to do is to push me up the ranks as a design manager, like a beautiful. Then I got into the company, we had a design manager already. I started jumping on calls with this guy regularly, just in, trying to help him out as much as I, as I can. Oh, do you need any help? Do you need anything? Help the guy do whatever I can. Then one particular day came. I always knew, I knew it was a matter of time that my company is going to get overwhelmed with work because why is a design um, um, agency, a design product software dev agency. And I knew the more clients you get, the more this guy cannot manage a team of designers. And I knew how the market works. I was like, damn, beautiful. I'm going to use this as my advantage. As I was helping the guy slowly, building that momentum, building that momentum. And it got to the point where it was so overwhelming. We had no choice but to call out for help. Who was the first person to jump on the help? Tony Collins jumped on the help. I was like, oh yeah, God, it's so beautiful. Like, I, I, I want to reach out to you, man. I was like, yeah, yeah, I know, I know, I know. It's fine. Like, you want help, right? What do you need help for? And that was how I became a design associate manager. Now, there was somebody else in the company who I knew she was gunning for that role. She wanted that role so bad, and she was supposed to be the one to be, to be in that position, right? Because she was here before me, so why, why is she not the person there, right? Everybody knows she's amazing, right? I'm like, oh my God, I was like, damn. Um, it was a painful thing, right? But I knew what I did, and I knew how. So how did I do that? How to work? I make sure I was working with her personally too, right, on the project, so I could understand her skills, understand her weaknesses, know where she's failing at that I can improve on, so that I can keep myself in a position where I am the obvious choice, right? And I became the obvious choice, and kept pushing on, kept pushing on, and boom! I was promoted to being a full-time design manager. And the person who was a design manager became the design director and became a design manager in the company. Salary thing increased, everything increased. I was earning times five. Everything was just like mad. Money was sweet. I was enjoying my new role, everything I practiced for. And that was how I navigated company politics to get to a point. Right? I was basically kissing ass, doing what I could to get there. Mm-hmm. While also being like, subjected to the information I I feel time to myself and the function I give out and knowing the right things to say, knowing when to play the right psychological games and when when not so, right? That's company politics for me, right? So how can you do that? It's honestly I learned all of this through these books here, right? Yeah, these two books. The 14 Laws of Power and the Laws of Human Nature by Robert Green, right? These books are amazing, like honestly. If you want to be a dangerous designer, learn how to understand psychology, right? Learn how to understand human emotions, human motivations, human human flaws, right? This book will help you do that, right? Read up on things like this, right? There are a lot of informational videos like this I watch on YouTube, right? I can send you results. I'm not going to send anybody resources because I don't, I don't, I'm going, I don't have, I don't know if I have the time to gather up resources, but I can always, you can always reach out and I can point into a few directions. But um, moving forward, like this book will help you do that, right? It will help you understand how to increase your, um, your value as an individual, right? Putting a place where you can read people, right? You can understand these realms and massively add that to your advantage, right? And you'll be able to like counter things that comes your way, filter the right information on what to use, the right things to say at the right time, right timing for certain things. You want to apply reverse psychology to certain things, right? To increase your your value, to increase your money, and it helps you in negotiation a lot, right? So yeah, these are all that to do company politics. Now, um, collaboration, teamwork, and management of the power wrap-up. Um, for this, no designers can produce a successful product on their own, and that's the truth. You need to be able to plan. Teamwork makes a dream work, and that's an obvious truth. Plan, recognize who is going to do what in the company, recognize who's going to do what in the team, um, delegate tax, share the tax. Um, everybody has to do what they are doing. Update the manager, update the your direct head who you are supposed to be reporting to. Like, oh, um, this is what we're doing. We've done this. We've done this. Um, these are the things each person is working on. This is how we're going to collaborate. We're going to be meeting regularly. This, 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 this. That's how you work with collaboration, right? Be open, right, guys. Be honestly open to how you collaborate with people. Be open and be receptive, right, to people's emotions. Be open to um to learning new things from people, be open to feedback, right? 
Because honestly, you need to put yourself in a position where you place your company satisfaction and goals above your own, right? You are not trying to be, you are not trying to take leadership from anybody, right? Leadership is a um, cooperative thing. It's no one person. One person can be the facing the front facing leader, but leadership, a, a true leader is meant to be a follower, right? A follower to who? A follower is naturally somebody who follows the leader. So if the true leader is meant to be a follower, so you are definitely following the people you are supposed to be leading, right? So it's a, it's a vice versa thing, right? It's a fucked up and, and psychology thing, right? So now, think of it like this. You put yourself in a position where you are building and managing expectations. You are giving updates. You are communicating effectively. You are being attentive. You are paying um, extra attention to the things you see. You are applying all these things I've talked about, right? That's you showing quality leadership skills. And those are the skills that differentiate senior designers from training designers, right? Being able to coordinate, being able to delegate tasks, being able to know, understand people's strengths and weaknesses and know who is the best person to work on this and who is not to work on this. Do all of that. Beautiful. That's what it means to, to plan, right? Keep open communication. Never withhold information when you carry out tasks. Don't feel like, oh, this is, uh, this is something that is a no-brainer. I shouldn't talk about it. It's a lie. Write it down. Talk about it. Present it. Share it. Share that information. Let it be that, oh, be like, oh, yeah, that's cool. We also thought about it, right? Thank you for pointing that out. All those little things show people you are paying attention and you are willing, you are like, you have good quality teamwork skills and you are willing to do everything you can to push the team and business forward, right? These little things you do would always, 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 always come back for your good when it's time for a promotion or something, when it's time to get a raise or something, or whatever it is, right? Identify obstacles and address problems as a team whenever these things occur, right? Nobody's an island. Right, you need to do all of this together as a team. That's how you collaborate with people. Then um, show interest in others. Show interest in how people do things. Show interest in their lives aside from work. Show interest in what they did over the weekend. Show interest in um, what country are they in, right? What do they do in their country for fun? What do they do for fun? Are they married? Are they not married, right? Do they have a kid or not, right? I was on a one-on-one -on -one with a designer. This designer was showing me pictures of how he was so lean as, as something. He was very lean and all of a sudden he's so cute. Like being worked out all his life. Why? Because he broke his heart. But that, was, that was definitely not about work, right? That has created a communication and a link between me and this guy. This guy doesn't reach out to me like, bro, I need your help. Can you give me a day off? Please, I need to quickly do something, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, yeah, no, I got you, bro, right? Because I'm creating... um good vibes and communication with this person right and trust that it enables us to work easily so when i tell him that oh bro i need you to do this do this do this even when he doesn't like it right because he knows that we both trust ourselves and he knows i always want the best for him right he knows that what i'm telling him to do is something that he can do if i can believe in him to tell him to do that and he can do it it's going to go an extra mile to do that basically it's reverse psychology thing and work up and use all my design as it says so yeah that's that's how you open so um, recognize people's emotions, right? Learn to detach from your own emotions as well. Recognize your emotions. There are most times people will get on your nerves. People don't want to do things certain ways. People will not put their designs in frames. They will be using groups. It will annoy you. People are not using auto layouts or people, or maybe you're the type that doesn't like using auto layouts and start with a project. Maybe you are done and you're finished and everything is finalized and you start putting everything into components. Maybe you're the, you, like there's so many people working different ways. So many things I know you learn to recognize your emotions. I solicit those emotions, right? There's something I do whenever I feel certain emotions for five minutes straight. I will vent about it to myself or to somebody I, I'm very good, like I trust a lot. Vent about it, and after that five minutes, it's gone. Not to talk about it again. Vent out all these emotions and move on and go back to work. All right, that's the rule. And slowly, I kept practicing that to a point where there were a lot of times where I felt like killing this person, like. In my head, I was like, this person was here with me right now for shoot, shoot, right? So pissed off and angry. But after five minutes, the emotions just flew out, right? Those are things you can do as a person, right? It's not easy sometimes. Sometimes I forget that I'm supposed to do that, right? Especially when it's maybe in my relationship or, or maybe in, with my, like, you know, relationships like friends, um, families, maybe a loved one, something, right? You might tend to forget those type of things. But I make sure I never forget this thing when it has to do with my company that pays me. Right? Because I don't want to get on anybody else. So yeah. Um, last but not least for this is self-management. So for self-management, right? You need to realize that self-management, emotional management, um, mastering self-management is crucial, honestly, right? To wrap this up, it's very crucial for you. Making your own decisions and 
making your own decisions about how to organize your work rather than being led by or controlled by a manager. You need to understand that as a designer, you're in a company, you have a manager, yes, or you're a freelancer, you're working with a client, yes, good. But as a, as a designer, you need to understand, you need to understand what self-management does for you. No manager or no company wants to work with anybody that cannot manage themselves, right? In terms of you don't know how to structure what you should be working on. You don't know how to structure your work exactly. You don't know how to collaborate with other these developers. You don't know how to handle um, design to develop to work with team members. You don't know how to plan your day, plan yourself. They always have to remind you to go and feel, um, time, um, track your time as a designer for the work you have done that day. Or they always have to remind you to come and drop updates for stand-up. You don't know how to manage yourself. Those little things can get you fired. I was having a one-on-one -on -one with the designers um, yesterday and um, on Friday, the guy was telling me that our CEO told him that the only thing that can get him fired is if he fails to track his time consecutively or close to him getting fired. Just because of tracking time, but I'm doing amazing work, but tracking time can get you fired. Come on, think about it, man. S simple things like this can get on people's nerves, right? Especially when there's a structure in the company, right? Structures and rules are not there to cage you. They're rather there to give you flexibility and freedom, right? Because if you are doing these things, Right, you find out that you are less in situations where you have to worry, you have to fret about anything. You are happy, you are fine, you're sticking by the rules, everything is fine. Nobody's coming to trouble you, you're not troubling anybody, you're living your life, you're doing what you want, you're getting paid, you're putting food on your table, right? You're not tense or anything. So, another thing is plan, right? And um, pay attention. A messy mind as a designer, right? What is result in messy products, messy designs, and messy communication, right? The reason you realize that when you are in your messy days, messy moods, right? You have fucked up crazy moods. You realize that you don't always have a good day at work. People always notice when you're not fine, right? And you notice that oh, in most cases, most of the problems you've had with people are always around days when you don't feel good at all or you're pissed or something. You always remember what I said about that five minutes rule. You always want to idolize those emotions and subtract those emotions from yourself. Learn to be a machine in cases like that. A machine in the sense where you can detach those emotions, right? Articulate those words and tell someone that, oh, um, I was kind of offended by what you said, but I totally understand why, where you're coming from, right? But I just thought to share with you that um, I was quite hurt, but um, it's totally fine. And um, moving forward, I would think of ways we can you know, work better together so we can avoid situations where I don't have to feel hurt anymore or something, right? Then I know, like, this is me talking from the top of my head, right? Just simple things like this over a call with someone who offended you, right? Can help you understand why this person offended you. And you can ask questions like, oh, for a start, um, um, I noticed you mentioned something through the call, right? Um, I really didn't understand what you said, what you meant by that. Could you give me, like, could you explain more? Because um, I don't know if I misunderstood, but I felt quite hot by what you said, right? Let the person talk. If the person does not apologize or not, no problem, let him go, right? The sorry or no sorry is not going to put food on the table or not, right? If you want to carry sorry on your head, I would especially tell me sorry. I'm going to be keeping my to him because of that, you won't work effectively. That's a joke. So I would call you for your door, right? Learn to detach your emotions, right? Let it go. You're not going to get back at anybody. There's no problem. Don't try to get back at anybody, right? Do you do your work and get the fuck out, right? Relate to people you can. If someone hurts you, it's fine. Let it go. You can report to your direct time manager. Share that information with him, right? Don't make it sound like, ah, this person did me bad. If he doesn't apologize, it's a problem. No, right? Most times, people do these things without even realizing, right? Some people, everybody is trying to want to, you know, do the best for themselves or be the best for the company, and they can make mistakes in these certain things. So give people the benefit of doubt when things like that happen, right? Pay attention to these things. Then know your values as a designer, right? Know yourself what, know what you want to achieve, right? What are you trying to do? Like, um, if you don't know what your values are, right, you struggle in making like certain decisions for yourself, right? If you know your values, you'll be able to define your goals. You'll be able to know what are the steps you need to take in order to achieve certain goals. You'll be able to plan a work schedule for yourself. You'll be able to track your time properly. You'll be able to, you know, understand and optimize how long do I take to do certain goals, right? If you're going to be paying attention to these things easily. Right? Because you understand your values. You understand how to channel your values into good business decisions for yourself. Because see yourself as a product. See yourself as someone who wants to um, prototype your product, iterate your product to the best of its abilities, right? So that you can be able to best feature, so that you can be able to sell your product, people buy. Now, people are buying into your product. You still need to keep giving updates, right? So as a designer, if you, are not, if you don't understand the worth and value of that product, 
that, oh, this thing is going to bring more money for me, right? This thing is solving problems. You are a problem solver as a person. If you don't understand those values, you'll not be able to understand what are the next iterative things and updates I need to work on. That's what are my goals, right? Okay, so how can I schedule working on these products to update myself, to update my product art, to update my product image as a designer, right? If you don't understand these things, you'll not be able to also understand that, oh, you need to track your time as a designer. You need to know how much time you spend working on certain tasks. So you can have an estimate. When someone asks you on the project, well, how long is it going to take you to accomplish this? Um, on an average, it's going to take me one hour, two hours, or three hours max or 24 hours in the space of two days, right? That's eight hours work day, eight hours work days each, right? You can be able to estimate these things. It makes your life easier and makes life easier for managers, right? You can be like, oh, okay, it's going to take me this long, but because I have to, um, about two other tasks, I'll have to prioritize or shift priorities. How long is it, um, what's the urgency of these tasks, right? How, how long, how soon do you want me to work on this? Questions like that helps you to understand, oh, okay, maybe you might need to re-delegate this. That is you effectively communicating. That is you engaging, trying to manage yourself and manage your clients, manage your product managers. That, oh, this is what you want me to do. I can't do this, right? So let's read that. Let's ded um, dedicate this to someone else or something, right? That is how you reflect. That is how you um, manage your time, right? Mm -hmm. So now, um, to wrap up, I'm so sorry. Right? This is a very sensitive thing for me. Soft skills are very sensitive for me. Apologies, right? So now, um, let's move on. Pay attention to yourself, right? Spend time listening to others as well. Spend time listening to yourself. Pay attention to others. Practice mindfulness. Learn to meditate or focus on yourself, right? In certain periods of, of work. Practice gratitude. Learn to thank people. Learn to appreciate people for the work they do, right? Then most times reflect on yourself. Define, like, think back, sit down, work on your goals. Schedule time for yourselves, right? Work on these things. Create a to-do list, right? Have something you always fall back to. to help keep you in track right create focus times for yourselves create prompts for yourself to remind you of certain things right what went well today what didn't go well today write down those things and i can also re reflect back organize yourself and document this these things you do right document your day-to-day -day activities document the emotions you feel right so yeah that's 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 for that um so um that brings me to the end of my stuff guys so yeah test and trials how did i do this being good at design is not enough that's your industry being good at design is not enough if you are good at something do something about it you just can't wait around and expect people to recognize your value and that's your industry cat right so instead of saying things like oh i'm going to practice take a step because that's what i did right i took a step and I started practicing right things like oh nice idea but here is my idea like imagine someone is talking and you tell the person that oh oh it's a nice idea but here's what i think that's very wrong right so i started doing things like oh you mentioned something oh that's a really nice idea right can you tell me more about it right i don't mind can you mind sharing more insights about this right because it will be helpful for this product or this product then when the person is doing it, like oh nice we'll look back into it all right moving on so here is my own um idea as well what do you think right things like that helps you right these are little things that will help you practice active listening Right, helps you ask quality feedback and whatnot. Um, guys, this brings me to the end. Any questions? Thank you for um, attending to this call. I'm sorry for taking time, almost two hours. Oof. Any questions? Let me know, guys. Thank you so much, Colin. Um, we would I had to rush that. I'm so sorry, honestly. I'll just Eugene see. already did all this. I don't need to. No problem. We will be taking questions for just two minutes. So if you have any questions, please act in two minutes so that we could just end the call. All right, if there are no questions, um, thank you so much, Collins, for this um, session. It was really detailed. <laughs> and i learned a lot of things because i'm actually an introvert and i'm like these are the things i need to do all right please please proceed augustine okay hi colleagues um thanks very much i learned a lot actually i think i think you're basically talking to me because i learned a lot from the conversation and um i wanted to know also if this will be um uploaded so that's by the side. 
because the information were, were coming really fast and they were very useful. So if that would be uploaded, I would love to know where it was uploaded. Then um, my question is, um, how how do you um, how do you communicate effectively in, in a case whereby in an environment whereby you um, you have a senior designer in front of you, um, design wise, um, um, UX wise, the the person is really good, uh, but in terms of like having a good approach towards um, design, the person is not yeah the person is not that um. It's not that good in terms of um, identifying good designs in terms of visual, but it's really good in UX. And you, you, you're trying not. Um, for me, I know I'm a bad communicator in, in that part because I don't really know how to yeah. like, tell him that okay, okay, this will. Um, how, how can we make this better? Um, our company as as a, as a product. How can we make our product better in terms of visual hierarchy? So. To give you a particular example of that was that we're having like um, a back and forth in what typeface we should use. And um, we're going with a particular typeface that don't really necessarily convey the brand and every other thing because as a stand, there was no brand um, identity designer in the company currently. So um having to like um, so he, he um when I came on board was using a particular phone, so I talked about how Here's what I did, um, the way I talked to him. I said, um, hi, I'm having difficulty using um, our current front. Can we switch to a newer front? And then uh, it was like, okay, what difficulty are you having? I'm like, okay, in terms of um, sizes, if it's 14 pixel, it's way too, it's way too big and stuff like that. So, but I found out that at the end of the day, I was a bad communicator because he told me the reasons and then I went back saying the fact that this wasn't good uh this wasn't a good thing but i i never knew how to even express how to say okay this is good but um i, I never knew how to show what's it called, what i'm talking about yeah. for example if i have a good idea on how this could be better uh, and i thought about okay why how about i design something else and show it to him but at the end of the day I, I felt like it would be very rude of me to do that so i'm, I'm kind of stuck in terms of um even um accepting feedback from me and trying to translate those feedback to my own so because i've seen that i have to pass through this guy wherever i want to go to in this company yeah uh, I, have to, yeah, I have to make yeah. things work for for me and then you get in a very good way so i'm kind of struggling with that part a lot in communication yeah in com communicating mm. with my seniors in the company mm. All right. Makes sense. Um, okay, you can hear me, right? Yes, I can. All right. So um, the truth is, there is there is no um, there is no um, one 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 size fits all um, solution to this, right? But in my own experience, I worked with a senior designer at the early stage of my career, and I had something similar to him. At first, I was not good, good um, feedback. Um, giver, so and I was not um, communicating with this guy effectively. So because of that, it put our relationship in strain. So what I did basically, right? I, I put myself in a situation where I needed to like mentally tell myself that okay, I am human. If someone approached me this way, I would have definitely like you know put myself like in the shoes where I can easily get fired. This guy can tell me to get out of the company because we're not working effectively, right? And this guy will definitely not see my good sides. He will always speak out on anything wrong I did, right? Because of how I approached him, right? But as a senior designer as well, I also expected that, okay, as a human, this guy will have somewhere in his heart to you know, adjust and we can still mend this relationship, right? So I started with incremental feedbacks, right? Like, um, oh, hey, like this, this design you did, um, like is really amazing, right? Like this is good, awesome, right? Even if I see something wrong, for that moment, I don't say anything, right? And then I just keep praising him, making him feel good, making him feel like nice about himself. And the next thing I'm like asking him questions like, oh, how did you do this, right? Even if I know how to do it, right? But because I want to make him feel like, oh, um, I'm someone who wants his validation, right? Or wants his expertise, his experiences. I make him feel like, oh, he's on top of the world. I just want to make him feel good about himself. and make him feel like, oh, he's, as a senior designer, he's teaching me things. So that was something I did to put him in a position where we started relating it 
I just, like from there I started trying to befriend the guy, right? To try and understand more about him. I was trying to like pay attention to how he responds to things, how he understands things, what are his perceptions, perceptions, right? How he um says things, right? How does he take feedback? And then from the moment I started understanding all of that, I started like from saying, oh, this font is not good. I feel we shouldn't use this, right? It's not good at all. I don't take it. So making things like, hey man, what's up? Um, so as I was working with this, I noticed that oh, I was not able to do this, do this, do this, right? And um, I don't know how flexible this thing is, right? I'm having a bit of an issue. Here. Do you think you can help me out or give me insights to how I can make this better, right? So I know I don't like the font, right? But I want him to like feel like, oh, I'm having a problem. Can you come in and see what my problem is? Can you join me? And let's see how we can fix it together. I need your expertise, right? I am pushing in that direction so that you can see that there is a problem with this thing, right? And I keep having problems and you can see that. He now went on to be like, oh, maybe we should change this thing. I feel oh, this one is giving you a problem. I never really experienced it, but now that I see it, maybe we should change it. Or what do you think? Or I don't know if you see where, where I'm coming from, right? Slowly yes, pushing yes. in a direction where he sees that, okay, we need to change certain things, right? And then at this moment, I'm like, oh, Papa, yeah, I don't know, like, um, I don't know how you're using this font, but can you show me how you're using this, right? Maybe I need to learn one or two processes because to me, I, I can't really use this that much. I'm finding it a bit of a trouble, right? So if you're ever open to maybe we can change this font, it will be good, right? Maybe we can improve it by using this font, right? I already went ahead to design something similar, right? So you can see, do you see how this looks like compared to, uh, to this current font? What do you think, guy? Right? Like, make it feel, Okay. Involved, right? So that's 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 how I did that, right? To solve my own problem, right? And you need to put yourself in a situation where at all times, guy, try your best to be like before you respond to a feed, like to a feedback, think about it. Before you give a feedback, think about it. Pause for like thirty seconds. Mm -hmm. Think. Try and think about what you need to say so that you don't end up hurting someone. And you yourself don't end up feeling like, oh, well, I can't accept this feedback, right? You don't always want to do that to yourself. So, yeah, that's how I solve my problem. I hope that answers your question. It does. It does. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. It does a lot. Thank you very much. All right, man. All right. Thank All right. you. Um, so, well, questions, we won't be right? taking any more questions because of time. Um, <laughs> I would send Collins social media handles to the chat so you can reach out to him on his socials because of time we're not taking any more questions yeah um thank you so much for this session it was really awesome i learned a lot of things um concerning the recordings it will be posted on our youtube channel you can go there now subscribe on your post notification so that you get a notification when we post um so that you can get the recordings before you go um, Design with EU partner with Propel. Propel is a cast platform that helps um, companies hire people. So they reached out to us because they know we have a community of designers and they, um, they reached out to us to allow our designers to fill um, the form to be added to their talent pool. So you can um, subscribe to our newsletter the talent the link to the talent pool is there and you can fill it so you can be added to their talent pool so you can just probably get a mail that your um they can match you to the job that fits you basically thank you so much for sticking to the end and we'll see you guys next sunday bye have a nice week all right bye guys all right thanks Bye. Thank you so much. All right. Bye, everyone.